Hello booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Bookends and Books. This is my January wrap up. Um, and after that, I want to uh, uh, come back, uh, t t take back my word, um, revisit my 2023 objectives. Because given what I've read in January, I now realize that some of my objectives for the year uh, will not be reached. Uh, they, they were not realistic or perhaps were not entirely in line with what I wanted. Uh, perhaps it was a bit wishful thinking on my part. So anyway, I'm going to start with the book that I have read. Uh, I, I won't be too long about it because um, uh, the, the books that deserve to be talked about at length will be talked about at length in different videos. And uh, those that don't deserve a lot of words will not receive a lot of words. Uh, not that I read any bad book. Uh, all the books that I read were good. So I started with two books that I read for Historathon 2023. It's a readathon that is created by a Vin from Revenant Reads, and it's new for this year. It's a year-long reading event, and we are invited to read nonfiction history. So I'm going to leave links in the description box below, of course. And uh, the books that I read were these two books. So I read uh, How Do We Look by Mary Beard. Uh, this is uh, a work, um, a work. This is a history of art. So it's made in two parts. It's two essays. The first essay is about the representation of human beings in early art. So from prehistory to uh, antiquity. And the second essay is about uh, religion and art, how uh, the edicts of religion influence the art we make. Uh, and it's full of pictures. It's gorgeous um, because um, originally it was uh, the, the essays were based on a program that Mary Beard hosted. So it, they were made to go with images. So that's why there are so many pictures in the book. And it's really it's really fun to read. Uh, I cannot say that I learned anything earth shattering in this, it's rather basic, uh, but I really enjoyed it nevertheless. So uh, that was fun. Uh, another book that is not earth shattering but was very interesting is Voyagers by um, Nicholas Thomas. This is about the first inhabitants of the islands of the Pacific. So think uh, New Caledonia, Fiji, New Zealand, Hawaii, Easter Island, all of the islands of the Pacific and everything in between. Um, this covers a lot of the same ground as Sea People by Christina Thompson. So if you've read that, perhaps uh, there's, a, there's a bit of redundancy with this. Um, this one is very much an overview of the current knowledge that we have about the settlement of the Pacific. So he goes back to the, uh, what were the name? Lapita people? Is that it? I forgot the name. Um, it's it's a people we don't know much about, but we know that they are um, they are identified by the pottery that uh, they make, and that has been found on various islands in the Pacific, um, but mainly the Western Pacific. And it's sort of how they know, or we know, I should say, collectively as human beings, uh, that uh, the first people of the Pacific came from Asia and then sort of hopped island to island until the entire Pacific was settled. Uh, so this is an overview. Um, I learned quite a bit, um, but uh, it's, it's nothing in depth. It's just 175 pages, but it was very interesting. Then the other books that I read were all fiction. Um, I was in the mood for novels and I was in the mood for classics too. One of the classics I read was uh, Dangerous Liaison, Les Liaisons Dangereuses by Chauderlo de Laclos. Uh, this book I read for the Classics and Company Book Club. It is hosted by Anne Novella and Micah Cummins, and I'm a host for this first book. Um, I'm going to leave links in the description box, and I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm going to talk about it with Anne and Micah. So, um, yeah, the, the, I can only say that I very much enjoyed reading the book and that I enjoyed reading it with the book club. There was a discord uh, and with uh, good discussions, and it was super interesting. Um, another book that I don't want to talk about too much is uh, The Idiot by Dostoevsky. So this is an omnibus of three works of Dostoevsky in French. Um, it's the first time that I read this translation of The Idiot. Uh, it is by Andrei Markovitz. Um, and there's a lot to say about The Idiot of Dostoevsky, so I think I want to make a different video for that. So I'm going to not say a lot. Um, I'm just going to say that it was a reread. It's the first time that I read this translation, uh, but the book itself was a reread. However, it had been a very long time since I read that book, so I didn't remember a lot about it. And at first I loved it. The first part is just so brilliant. And then it somewhat unravels a little bit. Uh, Dostoevsky becomes Dostoevsky and he just starts to wonder a little bit. And secondary characters become primary characters. And it's just, 
yeah, all over the place a little bit. Uh, but anyway, uh, I want to talk about it more in um, another video, I think. Uh, so uh, it, it's possible that you never see that video because I'm not making a lot of videos this year, but I intend to. So my, my intention is there. <laughs> another classic that I read, because after reading 750 pages of Dostoevsky, I wanted some more Russian classics. So I turned to Turgenev and Fathers and Son. Uh, this is a book that I had for 20 years, I think. Um, the, the the price tag, I think it's from Sweden. So uh, I turned to this book that I had not read 20 years later, uh, and now I read it. Um, the translator is not mentioned anywhere. I read all the fine print and I could not find his or her name. And uh, I would like to address a complaint to that translator because there's a translation choice that, I, that is made and that I don't agree with. Uh, some of the names, most of the names are translated, and I hate when the names are translated. Uh, for example, one of the main characters is supposed to be Yevgeny, but instead of being Yevgeny, he's Eugene. Um, so it's, it's a bit odd for a character to be named Eugene. Uh, also, um, in Russian, the, the last names of the... how can I say that? Um, so in Europe, in general, husband and wife have the same name, and the children have their father's name. Um, in Russia, it's true too, except that the, the names change for men or women. So, for example, this is Turgenev. A woman named Turgenev would not be named Turgenev, she would be named Turgenieva. Um, and the translator decided to remove that A. So there's a Madame Odintsov, she should be Madame Odints Odintsova, but she's not Odintsova, she's Odintsov. And that's the other thing, um, the polite way of addressing people in old Russia. I don't know if it's still the case today, but at the time, it was to use the first name and the patronym. So th this character, Adintsova, should have been named Anna Sergeyevna. Uh, however, the um, whenever it was talked about, um, whenever the narrator was naming that character. So when another character was addressing her, they used Anna Sergeyevna. But whenever the narrator was talking about the, the woman, or another character was talking about her but not in her present, she became Madame Odintsov, which is ridiculous. It does not exist. So that I did not like. Uh, but I did like the book. It is short, which is quite rare for a Russian classic. Um, it is also about the meaning of life, because our main characters are two students, I guess. Uh, the main one is uh, Bazarov, uh, Eugene, Eugene Vasilyevich Bazarov. Um, he is the son of a country peasant, a country, not country peasant, country doctor. Uh, he used to serve in the army. Uh, he used to be an army doctor and now he's in the countryside and he acts as a country doctor. And Bazarov is also studying to become a, um, a doctor. Uh, but he is a nihilist. He believes in nothing. He, he believes that every principle that they have learned from their ancestors should be forgotten and you should start from scratch and make your own opinion yourself and believe in nothing. So a bit of a depressing character, a bit of a rebellious character. And the second main character is his friend Arkady, who is a bit younger, so he admires his elder a little bit, and he brings, he invites this Bazarov to his country house. And you can see the tensions between Arkady and his father, because he, the, the father sort of realized how his son has changed. Um, and then when we see Bazarov with his own father, we can also see the distance between the two, the two generations. Uh, so th that is quite interesting. And you add to that a beautiful woman, Madame Dinsov, and love story, and it, it makes a wonderful mix. So it's very interesting. Uh, it's, if you've never read a Russian classic, you may start with this one. It's rather safe. It's not difficult to understand. Um, it's rather European in structure. Uh, Turgenev spent a lot of time in France, so he was very much inspired by French novels. So uh, it, it's very readable, the characters are interesting, it, it's fun. But just don't use this translation because that's annoying. The other two books that I read, uh, I read a uh, Quebecois book. This one is not translated in English, so I won't waste a lot of time on it. Uh, this is Royal, the author is Jean-Philippe barry Girard. Uh, because yes, in uh, th th there's a bit of a, um, can I call it a fashionate trend? Uh, children born in the 1970s and late 1970s and 1980s, especially in the 1980s, tended to get two first names and two last names. So that's that's normal. Jean-Philippe barry -Gérard, it's normal. And this is about uh, a student who is in law school at the University of Montreal. And it is, um, I like the narration style of this book. It is written 
I guess in theory, in the first person, because the narrator is clearly a character in the book. It's not a double of the author. It's clearly a character in the book. So the narrator is a character, but he speaks in the second person, uh, second person. So he speaks with you. Um, and, and, and he's an arrogant little piece of shit. And it suits him well to, to speak in the second person. Like, uh, you know, you go to law school and you see all the people and you know that they will be your competition to get the, the nice place at the uh, fancy cabinet. And you know, that type of character. So it, it kind of feels natural that it's used, uh, that the narration is in the second person. But it's the second person that feels very much like a first person. So it, that was very interesting. Uh, at first I thought the character was such an, uh, an uh, asshole uh, that I would not enjoy the book but then the more I think about it the more I think wow that was brilliant the, the author is very good hopefully I hope this is not a double of the author otherwise I, I, I had a lot of compassion for all his friends and family because uh, it must be very difficult to live around a character like this a person like this but I, I, I'm pretty sure this is not the author it's really just a character for the book and um, it's uh, it was very interesting it was fun and finally, uh, the last book that I finished in January was A Soul, So Long A Letter by Maria Mavba. So uh, the author is from Senegal and she wrote and published this in 1979. Uh, well, maybe she wrote it the year before, but it was published in 1979. And uh, she, th this is a foundational text of African literature, I think. One of the first written by a woman and one of the first talking about the condition of women in Africa. So uh, the narrator of the long letter, so the author of the long letter, is a woman with education. Uh, she married a man of education also. For 25 years, they lived together. Uh, she worked as a teacher. He worked as... He was not a doctor. I've already forgotten what he was. I think he started as a teacher and then he went into unions and then he worked for the government. But anyway, he was kind of a, an important character. Um, and for 25 years, they, they lived together in a very modern way. She had 12 children, but uh, they lived in a very modern way. And then five years, like five years before that, he decided to take a second wife who was the age of his daughter. So that sort of wrecks everything. And uh, the letter is being written five years later because the man died. And one of the tradition is that the, the women go into... Um, a confinement for I believe it's 40 days and during that time uh, there's a certain rituals that must be performed and the woman is not allowed to get out P people can come to the house but she's not allowed to leave and she uses that time to write a very long letter to one of her friends who faced a similar situation and who made different choices. And so, so this is um, a very good portrait, I think, of the situation of women in Senegal in 1979. So it's sort of at the brink, at the brink of modern life, European lifestyle, I guess. I'm, I, I don't know if it's fair to call it modern, but uh, I, I, I think we should include modern because it's, it focuses on material, on material things and uh, what you own and things like that. And at the same time, traditional lifestyle, like polygamy, I guess. Um, so it touches on very important issues. Um, I, I highly recommend this. It's a short little thing. It reads very well. And it's sort of um, a little trip to Africa in the, in the 1970s, 80s. So uh, that's the last book that I read in uh, January. Uh, my objectives, what happens with them? So, oh, well, TBR check-in. Let's check first. Uh, so at the end of the year, last year, I copied, I counted my TBR. So uh, I recopied it in my new notebook for the year. So this is all the books that I have and that I haven't read yet. And as I read them, I'm going to sort of color the, 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 the little square. And uh, I ended up with a number of 147. Uh, at the end of last year, I was, I was at 160 something, 67, 68. Uh, it's not because I magically read 20 books uh, over, over uh, the new year. Um, it's just that I decided to get rid of some books and I recalculated. And uh, some, books, some books I had included as unread last year. But this year I decided not to include them in the unread books. It's books that I have read like three quarters of them and for some reason have not finished them. 
Um, but I'm sort of reconciled that they will stay on my shelves and remain unread. So they are sort of in a passive situation. They are not in the active TBR. So I sort of have accepted that some books may never be read. And it's very likely that eventually they will be on hold. But at the moment, they are still there and they are still in red and will remain on red. So that's why I did not include them. But I still have 147 left. So um, I acquired two books. Uh, I read five. And I don't know unhold none and that's a difference of minus 34 144 which is a very good te when i read a book that's what i do i color the little square so um so what wh what does it do for my objectives so my objectives i wrote them on the next page um i said i don't remember if i said it in my video i'm pretty sure i forgot to say it in my video but i want to read 10 modern classics from not necessarily from the list but based on the list i made shortly before christmas of 100 modern classics i could read so i want to read 10 of those and uh so far well I, there are two titles one of them i just finished it in february on february one uh but uh, th that's going well so that will remain uh, the, the other thing is I wanted to read all the books with classics and company. So far, so good. That's going to remain as is. And the other two, 10 books by French Canadian authors and the Read Across Canada Challenge by Jolene. So uh, I read one book by French Canadian author, so far so good, one in 10, uh, and I decided to count it for the Read Across Canada. And I think that is the one that is pausing me, uh, causing me a little bit of a problem. Uh, when I first heard of Jolene's challenge, I thought, wonderful, I'm going to go. Uh, so what's the challenge? I should perhaps explain. So basically, Jolene came up with a list of prompts for each province and territory of Canada. Of Well, 12. She combined Nunavut and Northern, Northwestern Territory so that, so that we have 12 prompts. And at first I thought, I'm going to read in order. So the first month, January, is supposed to be BC, a book about nature. And at first I thought, I'm going to read a book about nature set in BC in January. And then I realized that perhaps this would be too complicated. So I decided that I would read, um, I would read one book per province in, in the order. So I would start with BC, then Alberta, then Saskatchewan. So follow Jolene's jo schedule. And then I realized that perhaps that wouldn't work. So I thought, okay, well, never mind. I'll do it in any order. As long as I read one book per province, territory, it's going to be just fine. And now I realize that I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, I, I haven't read, so I've read one book by a French Canadian author, one Quebecois book. And if I read 10 of those, uh, I guess I, one or two others could fit for one or two other provinces like New Brunswick and Ontario, that would be easy. Um, but then I would still have like seven, no, nine, nine provinces to go um and yeah i don't know uh, reading canadian literature it feels a bit like a should and i don't want to have to read things so um i'm i'm not abandoning it abandoning ab ab i am not abandoning the objective i'm tweaking it once again so at first i started okay i'm going to read the prompt the province in the month and then I decide, okay, well, never mind the prompt. I read the province in the month. And then I decide, okay, never mind the province. Uh, never mind the month, I'll read the province. And now I'm starting to think, okay, well, never mind the province. Um, what if I just read 20 Canadian books, regardless of where they come from? So that would be 10 by French Canadian authors, at least. And then 10 by other authors. Um, they don't have to be one from each province. They could be all from Ontario. They could be uh, half from Ontario and two from other provinces. They could be, you know, a, how about I make it that? So that, that's how reduced my objective is because I really have to admit that at the moment, I'm not, I don't feel like reading books, like reading Canadian literature. I don't know why. I saw the finalists for Canada Reads and when I heard the video, oh yes, that's all sound interesting, I want to read them. But then, like two seconds later, I just don't want to read them anymore. Uh, I don't know what's going on. So um, I'm going to change that objective and say 20 books by Cana Canadian authors, regardless of where they come from. Uh, hopefully half of them in French, but it doesn't even have to be that. So it's going to be my new Canadian objective 
uh, just 20 books by Canadian authors, and I think that's going to be j just fine. Um, the other things, uh, they are going well. The 100 book challenge that I'm doing one book at a time. If I buy a book, I have to read the book. So far, it's going well. I bought two books in January. Um, the one was this one. I bought it on the Friday. I finished it on the Saturday. And the other one, uh, I haven't shown it because I finished it in February, but I bought it at the end of January and I finished it on the 1st of February. So uh, it's, that is going well and I'm going to keep that. Another one was to visit 30 countries. So um, I have to say that at the moment, it's the one I'm obsessed about. Um, I, I, when I go to the bookstore, I'm just thinking, okay, where could I go? It's like I really want to travel in books. Um, so I think that one is going to be easy. And I think I, I won't set another number. I won't say, okay, well, if 30 is easy, then make it 50. Because 30 is just three countries, three new countries per, per month until uh, for the first six months. And then two new countries until the end of the year for the last six months. And when you think about it, it's really not that many. So yeah, at the moment, I, I would want to read world literature. That's what I want to do. Uh, so um, yeah, perhaps it's for that reason, because I want to read about the world. I'm not that interested about Canada. Per perhaps that's the reason. So, uh, yeah, so this is going well. So um, I think that's it for my revisit of my objectives. It's really just that. It's just the Canadian literature thing. Um, yeah, I think it's a bit wishful thinking on my part. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, at this moment, I am not that interested in Canadian literature. I want to read something else. So it's okay. There's no should in reading. I read what I want to read. And if I don't want to read Canadian literature, well, that's that. Um, that's why I watch Jolene's channel and Lindy's Magpie Read. They, they will tell me all about Canadian literature. Oh, and uh, Rainier Books, he's in Sweden. He's a German from Sweden, but he reads tons of Canadian literature. So, uh, yeah, with these channels, I am well aware of Canadian literature. So, um, and there are more, of course, but these are just three I thought about. So, um, anyway, anyway, that's it. So, uh, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Have you read any of the books that I've read? Have you already change one of your objectives for the year? Am I the only one who realizes after a month that some objectives will just not be achievable? So uh, anyway, thank you everyone for watching and I will see you. Thank you everyone. I don't know how to speak anymore. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine.